Denise, she had a sixth sense about stories, you know. When she found out about a story she felt needed to be told, she went in, and I mean she went all in. The story she'd been working on in what we now know were the final weeks of her life had her so very excited, truly. You'd stop by her desk and she'd flash that smile, even get a little giddy as she'd tell us about it. And I sat next to her, so I heard about it all the time. It's one that she had really been wanting to do for a while and one she was determined to do this holiday season. It's the story of the Nutcracker Ballet, which many different ballet companies perform at this time of year. But this particular performance was very different. An adaptive version of the classic, it features performers with special needs, from autism to Down syndrome to sensory and other challenges. The first two parts of it were shot in November. Denise did the key interviews and went to one of the final rehearsals. The last piece of the puzzle was the actual performance on stage, something she couldn't wait to see and share. Now, sadly, her view was from a vantage point none of us could ever have expected. But she was there. We could feel her presence when the curtain went up because she was so excited about it, we wanted to honor her by sharing the story, using as much of her voice as we possibly could. And hearing her is a comfort to all of us. It reminds us of the compassionate way she treated everyone she encountered. And what is your first name? I'm Kaylee. Kaylee and Maisie. Great girls, okay. Well, actually, my, my, my nickname is Maisie. My phone, my like actual name is Maeve. Maeve, M-A-E-V-E. -E. You're the first one who spelled it correctly. You're like I've, one of the first I've people seen it a few times. Correct. I love that name, okay. It's rehearsal time for Kaylee and Maisie, each tackling multiple dancing roles in The Nutcracker. They're also singing the two big opening numbers. The rest of the company is here as well, working on their moves. It's less than three weeks till showtime. Lyra Asparelli plays four different parts. My favorite part is Sugar Plum, because I, I love to love da dancing. And so you love dancing. Yeah. W tell me, what does that feel like when you dance? What kind of feelings are you having? Like happiness. Lyra's mom, Carol, was happy to find this outlet for her daughter, who has challenges resulting from epilepsy. She's also on the spectrum. They were first introduced to the program several years ago. When did you see that and, and what did you think when you saw it? Was it immediately, oh, I gotta get Lyra in this? So it was 2012. It was actually a classmate of Lyra, the mom, had told me about it. So I called Deb and she said, look, just come and try it. And she loved it. And we're driving home and I said, do you wanna go back? And she said, yes. I went on and I registered her and it's been six years. and. She loves it. Deb is fabulous. Deb is Deborah Marchese, the founder of the Little Wing Adaptive Ballet Company. And let's just run through this once. As soon as you hit the floor, let's give me some attitude, all right? Yeah. Deb's love of dance dates back to her childhood. When did you get started with dance and why did it uh, ignite such a passion for you? Tell me about that. I just remember uh, uh, back in the 50s, even before color television, watching American Bandstand as a little peanut, just sitting there fascinated by the whole thing. She started ballet lessons at nine. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And as an adult. I did study to be a dance teacher for a little bit. Life then pulled her in a different direction. I got accepted to the Children's Hospital uh, x-ray program. And then pulled her back. I was in a band and uh, for quite a few years, wow. uh, dancing and singing. It wasn't ballet, but I used my skills, my dance skills. Through all the twists and turns, dance has remained a passion. Give me a sense of, of what dance means to you. Uh, dance uh, to me is when I go to Stop and Shop or anywhere and they got some funky or cool song on, I have to, I'm, <laughs> I'm controlling myself, not just to let it rip and just dance, because it's, it's just in me. Good? There you go. 
Why did you decide to do the adaptive ballet? What went into that whole decision? It came about because uh, I had twins, two little boys, and uh, one was fine, but one got diagnosed around the age of three, four with autism. There was nowhere to bring your, your child. So tapping into her passion, she found purpose, starting a very special ballet company for her son, Joe. Just being able to give unconditionally uh, to someone who's, I'm not gonna say less fortunate because in my book, um, my son Joey is the teacher and we're the students. The company, part of the Milford Recreation Department, started small. Um, we started out with about four. But has expanded exponentially. She now has 25 student dancers with varying needs. I work with the abilities that they have. So some of the dancers can already do a cartwheel, believe it or not, so we use that. Or some of them like to spin, and we use that. And some of them can't really take too much uh, tactile um, sensory input or the music. And each one is different, but we're putting them in the same dance. Deborah gets help from a team of mentors, trained ballerinas who serve as a support squad. When I was with a mentor, it helped me not be scared anymore. And that allows the dancers to enjoy the pure magic of being on stage. When you put on that tutu and you put on your shoes, do you feel like a different Lyra? Tell me what, when you see yourself, what, what goes through your mind? What do you think? Like a lot of happiness <laughs> and caring. And what do you know about yourself when you see yourself in the mirror and you see yourself all dressed up in your tutu and you're standing up straight and tall? As What do you know about yourself? I'm ready to do this <laughs> and I believe I can do it. That's fantastic. And you are a dancer. You are a dancer. Yeah. How's everyone doing? Good. You, did you guys warm up your vocals? Oh, yeah. It is the night of the performance. Backstage is buzzing. Lyra's sister is helping with makeup. Dancer Jaden Noonan is feeling the butterflies. I'm feeling kind of excited, but kind of nervous. Deborah's son Joey is practicing the pledge. Under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. Marshall Fermender and Atul Joseph are readying their routine. A few final photos are taken, and then it's everybody in. We're going to have so much fun. You guys got this. One, two, three, Nutcracker! The curtain opens, and soon we see the performers and their mentors make their way on stage. And all that they've practiced for months becomes the real deal. Deborah and her son Joey share the spotlight, and then Marshall and dance partner Kate Lund take their turn. They perform perfectly. Kate makes a return to the stage for the dance of the reed flutes. And Lyra has her big moment as the Sugar Plum Fairy alongside her friend Lee. And at the end of the night, when it's time to take that final picture after the final bow, no one needs to ask the kids to smile. The smiles are already there. Thanks, Denise, for that. That was amazing. That performance was 10 days ago, just six days after we lost Denise. And Deborah dedicated the show to Denise Desenzo, our friend forever remembered. Eyewitness News at 6 is next.